Ladies and gentlemen, I gotta say, when I first got my hands on Coriolis Force during the Beyond Light campaign, I was pretty excited. I'm one of those weirdos who's into fusion rifles, and having a new one in Europa's planetary loop pool was a welcome sight. As soon as I got it, I threw it on and I was off to shoot some baddies. Didn't even inspect the gun. So when I charged it up in that first burst release, my initial thought was, what the F just happened? Instead of a volley of vertical projectiles, it shot a single burst of horizontal projectiles. This made my brain immediately go back to the days when I was playing Battlefield and trying to use the duckbill shotgun muzzle attachment. This was definitely one of the best ways you could ruin a good shotgun. So yeah, right off the bat, my relationship with Coriolis Force wasn't off to a great start, but I never completely gave up on it. I continued to tinker with it, trying to figure out what it needed for stats and what the right perk combination was. And the whole time while doing this, I was trying to piece together how, where, and most importantly, why I would want to use such a weapon. And at this point, I think I spent enough time with it where I can put it through its paces and give it a proper review. If you do not have Coriolis Force yet, as I said earlier, it is a Europa weapon. While there is a chance it can drop into wild, your best bet of obtaining it is talking to Variks and repeating the Technocrat Empire Hunt. Of course, you will need to finish the main Beyond Light campaign before you can do this. But if at any point during the course of this video you find it useful, helpful, or enjoyable, both liking and subscribing are great ways of supporting the content and your favorite Destiny playing Union Ironworker. And feel free to turn on notifications with the bell icon to ensure that you don't miss a fresh upload from yours truly. But with that, let's get into the review with a look at Coriolis Force's stats and perks. Alright, Coriolis Force is a legendary void fusion rifle that has a charge time of 660 with a base 6 rounds in the magazine. My mag size is boosted up just a touch. Intrinsically, this is an aggressive frame fusion rifle. The first, and for now, the only one of its kind. It does high damage, has a moderate charge time, and fires a horizontal volley. And we're gonna pull in some stats from Destiny Tracker that are adjusted for the role we're looking at here. You can see we have a very solid impact stat of 95. The range stat of 55 is comparable to most high impact fusion rifles at base. While the stability, handling, and reload speed are more in line with precision frame fusion rifles. That aim assist stat of 45 though is considerably lower than almost all other fusion rifles in the game. Now quick side note, with nearly every other fusion rifle, I want stability, stability, and more stability and a little range if I can make that happen. But with Coriolis Force, I think stability is probably the least important stat. I'll explain why in a little bit here. But what I am looking for is range and damage output. The roll I've been using has full bore for the barrel, bumping the range stat by 15 points, but dropping the handling and stability a little bit. For the battery, I've been using enhanced battery, giving me one more round in each magazine. In perk column one, I have feeding frenzy, increasing the reload speed with rapid kills. And in perk column two, I have the one for all perk, where hitting three separate targets increases damage for a moderate duration. And this is the first time I've personally reviewed a weapon that has one for all on it, so we're gonna dig a little deeper into that in this video. I'm also running backup mag for the weapon mod, allowing for another additional shot in the magazine, bringing it up to eight. Here's the full perk set on screen, and in my opinion, some other decent options would be hammer forge rifling or extended barrel for the barrel options. For the battery, I'd also be happy with liquid coils or projection fuse. In perk column one, killing wind could be nice, but also ambitious assassin may work really well on this weapon. In perk column two, I would love to see rangefinder or thresh if you're going to be using it mainly as a PVE weapon. Which, uh, spoiler alert, you probably should be. But with that, let's head into some PVE activities and test out Coriolis Force's damage and functionality. Alright, starting out with the damage comparison. Since this is the only weapon of its kind, I'm going to be using a high impact fusion rifle in Glacioclasm and a precision frame fusion rifle in main ingredient to weigh Coriolis Force's damage output. First up, main ingredient. It's hitting for 2,966 points of damage per bolt versus our Colossus Lost Sector boss. And since all legendary fusion rifles do shoot 7 projectiles, this totals out to 20,762 points of damage from one full spread. With Glacioclasm, our high impact variant, we're hitting for 3,372 points of damage per bolt, so our total damage from a single burst is 23,604. With Coriolis Force, we're hitting for 3,460 points of damage per bolt, so here, one full spread is going to net us 24,220 points of damage. 
So the total damage surpasses that of the other two fusion rifles. And the kicker is the charge time is 660, so it is shooting faster than the other two fusion rifles. So we're looking at higher single shot damage and higher potential DPS. Let's have a look-see at this spread though. A standard fusion rifle, when that spread releases, the projectiles come out one after another and the gun pulls upward as it fires. This is why I harp on stability when it comes to fusion rifles. It really helps keep that spread tighter. With Coriolis Force, it's really not necessary. The projectiles release at exactly the same time. Aiming down sights will help us keep this pattern a little bit tighter, and firing from the hip will allow it to fan out a little bit. And obviously, the further you are away from your target, the wider that spread is going to be. And this is why I really like One For All on this weapon. Basically, the way the perk works is you have 3 seconds to deal damage to 3 individual enemy targets. The indicator on the left side of the screen shows how many stacks you've built up, and once you hit 3 stacks, your damage buff will begin. And remember, you don't have to kill these enemies, you just need to hit them. Once your damage buff is applied, it'll last for 10 seconds. Now when the buff is active, Coriolis Force is dealing 4,672 points of damage per bolt, totaling out to 32,704 points of damage on a single charge. This is a 35% increase from the base damage. And to put this into perspective, that's only 2,500 points of damage less than a body shot from Sleeper Simulant. And I really do love having this perk on Coriolis Force in PvE because tickling three enemies with this gun is really easy to do. If you're in an ad dense area, you can probably hit two, or maybe, maybe three targets in a single charge if you widen out that projectile spread enough by firing from the hip. Then, once you get your buff rolling, you can focus on the biggest target on the field and start burying shots into them. Now, the base damage on this weapon is already really solid, but a 35% damage buff in a generous 10 second buff duration window lets you chew through almost any target very quickly. And with roll I'm using, there's a lot maximizing the efficiency. My battery and my backup mag are pushing the magazine size up to 8. This negates the need to reload as often, upping my potential DPS. And this is where Feeding Frenzy comes into play also. Since most trash ads are only going to eat a bolt or two from Coriolis Force, stacks of Feeding Frenzy are being gained. So as soon as I see that one for all damage buff proc, I throw 8 rounds back into my magazine very quickly to maximize that damage window. But while that wide projectile spread can be used as one of the weapon's greatest assets, it also is its biggest flaw. Since most enemies are taller than they are wide, there's always that potential of missing the far left and far right projectiles. And the further away from an enemy target you are, the greater that chance of missing some damage becomes. Now this might not be as big of a deal when you're squaring off against some big thick boss tier target, but if you're going to try to clip a wizard or a taken vandal with some ground to cover, you're probably going to have a rough time at it. But all in all, I was pretty surprised by Coriolis Force in PvE, and I think it is a solid option in certain scenarios. But what about the Crucible? In PvP, Coriolis Force is going to hit for, we're going to call it 45.5 points of damage per projectile. And this is actually lower than our high impact fusion rifles dealing 48.5 damage per projectile. Meaning, with Coriolis Force, you'll need to hit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 out of the 7 projectiles to deal lethal damage when inside of your optimal range. With a high impact fusion rifle, you need only 4. But speaking of optimal range, the Coriolis Force that I'm using will hit for full damage from up to 16 meters away. But things do get tricky here because of that horizontal projectile spread. Through some pretty extensive testing, when aiming down sights, I figure we're almost guaranteed to land 5 out of the 7 projectiles at 12 meters. And I say almost because every now and then, something silly like this happens. And do keep in mind, aiming across the shoulders gives you the best chance of landing the most projectiles. But when I moved back to 14 meters, I found it very rare that I could land enough pellets to secure a one-hit kill. It did happen every now and again, but I really wouldn't trust this weapon outside of that 12 meter mark. And when firing from the hip, I'm calling the maximum effective range 8 meters. Past that, you're just getting too wide of a spread to land enough bolts. So, I really wish I had a bunch of good news to tell you about Coriolis Force in the Crucible, but the bright spots are few and far between. But if you are inside this weapon's effective range, and you do continually land your shots on center mass, this fusion rifle is pretty consistent. Now like we saw in the damage testing, it's gonna burn you every now and again. But for the most part, it's not bad. 
Unlike a standard fusion rifle spread, there's no guesswork or chance that the volley is going to walk off course and you're going to miss out on a kill. Each shot pattern is nearly a mirror image of the last, and even when firing from the air, it doesn't seem to grow the shot pattern any measurable amount. And that charge time of 660 is relatively quick. This gives the wielder a better chance of dealing with multiple enemy guardians in the area, and it also serves as a better reactionary weapon than most fusion rifles if an enemy player gets the drop on you. But that horizontal pellet spread in general basically just kills this weapon, and it makes it extremely difficult to use in PvP. Our guardians do have pretty narrow hitboxes, and we have a lot of movement abilities at our disposal, but if you're slightly off target with this, say just like aimed at the right shoulder instead of center mass, you're gonna miss some projectiles, and you're gonna miss out on a one-hit kill. And then you combine this with the fact that this weapon is doing pretty much nothing to help you land your shots. Now, I'm not sure how this feels on console when you're playing with a controller, but we have an aim assist value of 45. When playing on PC, this feels closer to zero. Maybe with a controller, you'll get some reticle stickiness, and this won't feel as bad. On PC, that aim assist stat gives us bullet magnetism. And at least, from what I can feel, there is nothing pulling those outside projectiles inward if you're lined up on a target. So on top of the general functionality of the weapon not being exactly what you want to see in the Crucible, it's also very unforgiving. This leaves Coriolis Force in a pretty tough spot. And lastly, I had a dream, a, a vision if you would, of Coriolis Force being used as a tool to shatter a glacier wall. Because as you may know, unlike Titans and Hunters, Warlocks have no mass shatter ability. I was hoping that if I stood back far enough and hip-fired a spread into that wall, I could blow the whole thing down in one burst. But all I really got from doing this was the empty feeling of disappointment. So for the verdict, and if you're looking for a good PvP fusion rifle, sadly, this ain't it. The weapon's functionality at base is just wrong for the Crucible. Flip that spread vertically and we may be onto something. But just due to the fact we do have a high potential of missing some of our projectiles, and we do need 5 out of the 7 to land to deal lethal damage in one shot, there is very little upside to bringing Coriolis Force into the Crucible. But in PvE, like I said earlier, I was pleasantly surprised. You do need to be mindful of the distance between you and your target, and you do need to be mindful of what target you're shooting at. But the damage output was pretty impressive, especially when we had the one for all perk rolling. So in the right scenario, with some solid perks on it, I think this weapon could do quite well for itself in PvE. But if you did enjoy the video, feel free to leave it a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I have a lot more weapons in Beyond Light that I both want to review and re-review, so turn on notifications to ensure that you don't miss an upload. If you'd like to catch me live, I do occasionally stream on Twitch. I know it's been quite a while, but I do intend on hopping back on there sometime soon. And if you'd like to contact me, simply comment down below and I will be sure to get back to you. And with all that being said, I'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to check out this weapon review. You guys are awesome and I will catch you on the next one.